Jayon Brown, UCLA Bruin. Um, you know, when I was doing a little bit of research on you, I found out, you know, you've kind of had the, uh, you played the underdog role, similar to myself. Uh, you didn't get your, your, your chance to really shine until your junior season. Uh, explain how that went down and, and how you made the best of it. Oh, man, I was just playing behind some uh, really good talents. And um, when opportunity came my way, uh, make the most of it. But it was it was definitely hard to uh, get down on yourself a little bit. Right. And just, uh, okay, I got a good uh, good family source around me and uh, good friends to just keep my mind strong. And then uh, when, the, when the time came, made the most of it and never looked back. Did you ever... Did transferring ever cross your mind, or you were you were definitely a did it? Yeah, but I was I was a three star athlete, and I had like three offers, and I was like, who who want me? Like you know what <laughs> I mean? Like it's like if I try to transfer, like I ain't gonna go nowhere. So I was like, let me stick it out. But that's good. I mean, that's that's the thing that people don't understand in professional sports and in college sports. I mean, it's always the next man up. You know, we pray that you know obviously everybody gets through every season healthy, but the likeliness of hap that happening is rare. You know, so when your when your time comes. You gotta be ready. You gotta take advantage of that situation. It sounds like that was what you did. Yeah, no doubt. Like, just uh, my dad always told me growing up, like, just always be ready. Cause to. never walked into a like even throughout like high school, I had to wait, had to wait my turn, and he was always like, stay ready, so you gotta get ready. So, nice. uh, also learning in the college meetings. Um, I remember when I was a freshman, it was like, uh, like, did you watch uh, like practice? And I was like, nah, like I would, I didn't get no reps like that. And it was like. You gotta watch it, like you know, learn from other people's right. mistakes, and so like just getting good coaching like that just helped me form to the men I am today. Right. So you played under the Snoop uh, Youth Football League. So Snoop, who's a good friend of mine, we do a cancer foundation event together um, every year. But what was that experience like? Uh, you know, uh, having Snoop of all people have a league in your community and you being able to take advantage of that. Oh, definitely huge. Uh, Snoop has done so much for the city of Long Beach and. And just playing against dudes in that in that league uh, definitely helped harden you up because mm -hmm. Long Beach has a lot of a lot of good talent and not all of it makes it out, but right. uh, definitely hards you up and ready you uh, gets you ready for the real world. Definitely. What was uh, fourth year? Um, just finished up your fourth year uh, with the Titans. Your free agent, hoping to sign a deal. What has this process overall taught you? On not not the football side, but the business side of the game, because the business side is what a lot of people don't understand. It's a real business. Yeah, it's a cold world out there, man. But uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Free agency uh, coming up. Excited to see what's about to happen. And uh, it's definitely a, a patience game. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, most people like you want to get the decision out and uh, see what's about to happen. But uh, test it's, it's definitely a, a test of patience and just. Keep my head under just working and uh, taking it day by day. Walk me through what your off season is like now. What is what's your Monday through Friday like? I know when I played, my shit was ridiculous, and I know football players. You guys got a lot more preparation to do than us. So what's your what's your off season like? Shit, like first getting out of off season, I, I need my time. I mm -hmm. need my. How long you take off? Uh, I feel like the older I get, the more I take off. <laughs> How old uh, are you? Twenty five right now. About to be twenty six. Uh -huh. And my rookie year, I think I took like two weeks off and right got right back into back it. Into it. Mm -hmm. Second year, I took off. Took off probably a month, and shit. Now I'm probably gonna take off about a good two. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Get get the rest in, cause uh, I grind. I, I grind hard. I feel like like I'm in a weight room uh, during the season. Like I wake up at at five thirty. We don't have meetings till eight. Mm -hmm. I got my little routine that I do, and uh, stand a little bit after, and then go home, and you know, uh, just get myself together. But uh, mm -hmm. off season, I like I like to enjoy my off season. Uh, probably going on a couple trips, mm -hmm. but. COVID going on, yeah. my ass is in the house, yeah. uh, getting right, but yeah, I'm just chilling, man. How important is a routine? I think you hit on that, and, and that's what a lot of people don't understand, what it takes, that discipline, that routine to get you to that next step. You know, I didn't understand what a routine was until I got to the league. Like, to be honest with you, I didn't work out basketball-wise until I was in the NBA. You know, it's different now, uh, but that's how it was. But then being able to be around people, like Kobe and seeing how Steph and KD and you just get a chance to see how everyone works. But I think the main thing is is that discipline to want to work. Explain to you know younger people who are going to see this how important a routine is. Uh, routine routine is uh, everything. I feel like it helps helps the process of being a professional way way smoother. And uh, you you def it definitely doesn't come, but you learn from the older vet guys. And fortunately. Uh, Going to Long Beach Poly, uh, our strength and conditioning coach was like a military dude. Okay. So it was, he was he was tough on us, and then going into college, had a similar uh, guy, similar to that, and then getting to the league, 
it was way more free. And it's like, all right, like you got these workouts, they just hand you a card and it's like, it's up to you to lift. They're not, they're not really gonna watch you. Like they don't let you do what you do. But they know if you don't. They definitely know if you don't, they got cameras. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I'm, I'm fortunate to have some uh, really good vets um, that, that I was surrounded by going into Tennessee and just watching, you know, the guys that's been around for like 10, 11, 12 years mm -hmm. and seeing how they work. Right. And I was like, all right, like you got, of course you wanna be around your young dudes that you came in with, but it's like, all right, they doing something right. Like, you know what I mean? You got undrafted dudes that's been in there for how many, however many years that they've been in there, but they're doing something right. So just following that Sometimes and just Sometimes it ain't always the cool thing to do, but it's the right thing to do. Oh yeah, no doubt, no yeah. doubt. And if you want to be successful, just, just ask. Because dudes are so helpful to give out information. So yeah. I ask a lot of questions, even yeah. about life uh, that's outside of football. Absolutely, that's definitely important. That's the thing that I kind of feel like the NBA is, is, is losing out on. There used to be an OG to lean on on every team, you know? Whether they were playing or not, they were there, help you with the pitfalls, help you in this city, that city. But now it's all about younger, up and coming talent. So I kind of think they miss that OG mentor role to kind of help guide some of these young guys. Um, so hopefully the NFL keeps that going. Underdog mentality, fifth round draft pick. Tell me what kind of chip you've had on your shoulder because it kind of seems like you, you, your whole career has, has, had been, has been an underdog story. Talk to us about the chip you have on your shoulder because I, I feel like I was the same way. I got to a point where I was drafted in the second round, cut, went to the D-League for a second, and then came back like, forget it, it's either me or you, and it wasn't going to be you. So I was ready to do whatever it took to play and, and make 15 years in the NBA. Talk to me about the chip you have on your shoulder kind of always being counted out. Yeah, man, just like uh, I feel like the hardest time I went through was in college not being able to play, but um, definitely learning through that uh, experience for my first two and a half years and then my junior year finally getting a, a chance to start and uh, and play. But uh, going to the league, getting, getting drafted, uh, getting drafted late, I just knew like, all right, like I had to work for this all my life. And the uh, crazy thing is uh, when I got to my rookie year, that was the fastest time I ever touched the field. Like mm. first game, they threw me in there. I was third down, dude, too many <laughs> right. situations. I'm like, oh right. shit, like. I'm in the mix. I'm in there. So uh, just, just keep elevating off of that, learning the game. Um, from different players, but just like, I, I always thought I was, I was better than what, you know, the critics have said. And I feel like I'm uh, each and every day I go out on that field, I, I prove that. Yeah, you gotta believe in yourself. I think that's key. Off the field, tell me what uh, 50 fam, 55 game plan in Nashville is about. Yeah, so I, uh, I went to the YMCA when I was younger, uh, me and uh, my older brothers and my younger brother. And they gave me a, a really good experience of, of just fun and uh, staying out the way and also meeting people and traveling and, um, going on field trips, stuff like that, that, you know, your family, you know, might not have the time for. Right. But uh, once I got to Tennessee and, and I figured out what I wanted to do for my foundation, I figured out the figure, uh, 55 game plan, which is pretty much um, connect, connecting my life until children's lives uh, in school, which is um, for their goals, I have five things for them to do and five things of my own to intertwine our lives, which is for them to do their homework, be a good classmate, listen to their teachers, uh, live an active lifestyle, and for myself is do home do uh I want to offer them do their homework, and for me is uh, be a good teammate, um, listen to my coaches, study my uh, you got a lot of studying to do a yourself, whole lot of study. man. Mm -hmm. The study, no, the people don't understand. Room, the I swear, room is crazy. bro. We had uh, I had Charles Woodson on my po uh, my my podcast the other day, and that's what I don't think because I was a football player at first. I chose basketball last minute when I went to UCLA, but I was recruited to play football. But people don't understand the daily preparation. You guys are actually in these meeting rooms and, and how long of, of a day that is because of just the meeting rooms, not actually the contact, but it's the meeting rooms and the studying and all the film you guys got to do. Yeah, no, I feel like most people think uh, any football player's life is, all right, go to practice, watch practice, go home. But That's our life. That's not your life. <laughs> <laughs> Man, we in the meeting rooms. Like, there's so much scheme involved, bro. Right. Like, we watching quarterback cadences, their tendencies, like – like when they looking at receivers, how to line and block, who the dirty player is, all that type of stuff. So yeah. it's so much scheme involved and it, it's cool though. Cause once you get, once you learn that like- It's fun. Yeah, it, it makes it way more fun. And you, you can predict the plays coming mm -hmm. cause all the formations, all that stuff. So all you're studying. Yeah. How important getting back to um, 55 game plan, how important do you feel it is to obviously be who you are on the field, but give back in your community? It's huge. Uh, going to Long Beach Poly, I've seen uh, dudes like Willie McGinnis, uh, Deshaun Jackson, Mercedes Lewis, uh, Jarrell Casey, and m many more dudes. But come back to the school and and like just 
you know, like even they donating or, or having camps, just doing giving their part back. And now that I'm in a position that I'm in, right. that I want I want to do the same thing, and maybe I can inspire somebody to do the same thing when they make it, or just help out the community any type of way. And uh, not not too long ago, uh, connected with Willie McGinnis, and we uh, donated to the Boys and Girls Club together, along with uh, a lot of other Long Beach uh, guys. And uh, the Boys and Girls Club was uh, keeping keeping a steady center open. Now, that a lot of other, I feel like one of the few places I kept it open for uh, kids to go to after school and get their get the homework done. Mm-hmm. So I had to help out for a situation like that. And it's been it's been good. Well, that's dope, man. It's definitely appreciated. Like you said, you do it to obviously help but then inspire who's behind you because the people ahead of you inspired you. Tell me what, in your words, Black History Month means to you. I feel like uh, celebrating the black culture and uh, also like the, what we've been through as a as a culture and uh, ethnicity. And uh, fortunately, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to have my birthday in uh, Black History Month. Okay, when February is it? 26. Okay. Yeah, about to be 26. You're a Pisces? Man. I'm a Pisces. I'm a Pisces on March 9th. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we up there. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, it's a, it's a blessing to, to be black and, and I love it. Celebrate. It should be more than just a month. Define the word legend. A legend to me is um, somebody that you know handled their business in their sport or uh, or what they did professionally, and also uh, leaving a trademark mark be- beyond sports. Like mm-hmm. you reach, you reaching children from uh, you know other countries and other places that look up to you because you are that much of a of an icon and uh, a good person to you know idolize. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Yes, sir. No doubt.